Today I'm going to show you how to download, install and configure the best PlayStation 3 emulator. Yes, playing PlayStation 3 on your PC is possible, and I'm going to show you how to run the games with the best possible performance. The first thing you need to do is check the recommended system requirements to make sure your PC can run PlayStation 3. These requirements are on the emulator's official website, but I'm leaving them on the screen for you to check, okay? Now that you're aware of the recommended settings your machine needs to run the games with good performance, let's start downloading. Let's go to its official website and go to the Download tab in the top menu. On this page, we'll choose the RPCS3 based on our operating system. If, like me, you're using Windows, just go to the Windows tab and click on the Download button to download the emulator. Now back in the top menu of the site, let's click on the Quick Start tab. This page is where the system requirements are, but what we're going to do here is scroll down to Software Requirements. We'll need to download these two files highlighted in blue for the emulator to work properly. It's super simple. First we'll click on PlayStation 3 System Software, which will redirect us to the official PlayStation website. Here we need to download the latest system update released for PlayStation 3. There's no secret, just scroll down to the update using a computer tab, click on the plus button and download the update. This PSN site is a bit weird, okay? So note that if you just click on download, nothing happens. To actually download it, just right-click on download and click on save link as. Now choose where you want to download it on your PC. After that, just download the second important file for the emulator to work, which is Visual 2019. Now on to the best part, which is installing everything and configuring the emulator. The first thing you'll install is that Visual C++ you downloaded last, you know? Just open the installer and click next until the installation is complete. There's no secret to it. Now let's move on to the emulator. The emulator is compressed, so right click on it to unzip it. Remember that you need to have a file compressor installed on your PC to be able to do this, such as WinRAR or 7-Zip. For example, I'm going to unzip it on my PC desktop, so I'm going to right click here, 7-Zip, extract to, and this file name. That's it, this is the emulator folder. Once inside, we'll open the emulator by clicking on its executable. As it's the first time you're opening it, this little window will appear. Just check these two options next to the continue button, and the next time you open the emulator, this will no longer appear. And here we are at the PlayStation 3 emulator home screen. Now it's time to install the PlayStation 3 system update that we downloaded from the PlayStation website. To do this, just go to File and click on Install Firmware. Now just select the update file we downloaded and let the emulator install it. A little box will appear saying that everything went well and just press OK and the emulator will start compiling the firmware. This stage can take a little while. Now that the firmware has been installed and compiled, let's enable a very important function of the emulator, Game Patches. To do this, just click on Manage and then Game Patches. In the Patch Manager window, click on Download Latest Patches below. That's it. The emulator has found and downloaded several optimization mods available for various PlayStation 3 games. Depending on the game you're playing, if you activate its mods, you'll get a performance boost to run more smoothly. But this doesn't apply to all games. So in this video here, I'm going to show you an example of a game that we'll need to use mods for and another that we won't, okay? For now, let's forget about these mods and we'll come back to them later. Now it's time to add the games to the emulator and you'll need to search the internet, but it's not that difficult. The emulator recognizes two game formats, PKG and those that come in disk format. Games downloaded in PKG are usually made up of two files, a heavy file, which is the PKG itself and a smaller file with the extension wrap. This wrap is the game's license, meaning that without it the PKG file won't work on its own. Files in disk format come in another folder with the game's name and serial, full of other folders and files inside. To install games in PKG format, click on File, then Install Packages, Wraps and Dates. Now select the PKG file on your PC and click Yes. After installing, you'll do the same procedure, only now, 
Instead of choosing the PKG file, you'll choose the wrap file to install the game license. Now, to install the games in disk format, go to File, then Add Games. Now you show the emulator where the root folder containing your game is. When you find the folder, click on Select Folder. The game will now appear in the emulator's start menu. Now let's move on to a very important step that many people overlook, which is to check that your game has its updates installed, and if not, we'll learn how to install them. To make this procedure easier, it's a good idea to have Discord installed on your computer, because it's through a Discord tool that we pull game updates. To check if your game has any updates available, it's simple. Just find your game in the emulator menu and check the version column. If the game is out of date, it will show this message here, update available, and the update number in front of it. To update your game, first access the invitation link for the emulator's official Discord. With Discord open and inside the RPCS3 group, go to the Botspan channel on the left-hand side. Now, in the chat, you're going to type the following command, exclamation mark PSN, space check, space update, and before hitting enter, we're going to go back to the emulator, right-click on your game that needs to be updated, go to copy info, and then click on copy serial. Back in Discord, we'll paste the game serial in front of the command we typed. It will look like this. Now just press enter and Discord will provide all the updates available for your game. You need to download all the updates, okay? Download them one by one and save them in any folder on your PC. Now it's easy to install. Just go back to the emulator, click on file and install packages, wraps and the like, find the updates you downloaded on your PC and click open. That's it, your game is up to date. Now let's configure our controller to play on the emulator. To do this, just click on the pads tab in the top menu. In this gamepad settings window, we'll change the handlers tab to the version of the controller we're using. In my case, I'm using a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, so just select DualSense here and the emulator will map all the buttons correctly for me. If you want to play with your PC keyboard, just select keyboard and map the controller buttons the way you want with the keys on your keyboard. I've also tested it with the Anburnic controller, and it worked normally. Once you've finished configuring here, click save and you're done. Now we come to the part you all wanted, right? Let's configure the emulator so that your games run efficiently. This part will be divided into two stages, because we're going to make the global settings that will be used for all games in general and I'm also going to teach you how to make the customized settings, because some games need unique settings to run well, different from the global ones. That's why, in this tutorial, I'm going to base myself on Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, a game that works well with the global settings, and then on God of War 3, a game that needs customized settings to work well. Click on the config tab in the emulator's top menu to enter the settings. In this first CPU tab, you don't need to change anything, okay? Leave everything as it was by default. In the GPU tab, select Vulkan in this first handler tab. Vulkan will make your games run as smoothly as possible, but if you don't have a video card that supports Vulkan, this option won't appear here and you'll have to select OpenGL. After selecting Vulkan, select your video card under Graphics Device. Under Aspect Ratio, you can leave it at 16 by 9 so that the game runs full screen. Frame Limit is set to High by default, but you can lock the frames at 60 to reduce the possibility of choking in games. Anisotropic Filter can be set to High, and Anti-Aliasing can be set to Disabled for extra performance in games. In Accuracy, you can leave it at default. Here in the Default Resolution tab, in the first tab, leave it at 1280 by 720 which is what the emulator recommends. And on the bottom tab, you can upscale the resolution. For example, if you leave it at 100%, which is the default, the game will run at 720p, but if you increase it to 150%, the game will go up to 1080p. Here, the higher you go, the more it will demand of your PC. I recommend leaving it at 1080p and the game will look pretty good already. The rest down here you can leave as default, you don't need to change anything. Now, under shader mode, make sure you check async multithread so that the graphics are compiled quickly and don't crash. And in the additional settings tab, 
activate vSync and stretch to display area, right? That's it, on the next tabs you don't need to touch anything else. Click apply and then save and go back to the start menu. Remember that these are the global settings that run most games. But then you asked me, how do I know if the game I want to play runs on the global settings or if it needs a customized one? That's what I'm going to show you now. For example, Tekken 5 runs in the global configuration. I know this because by right-clicking on the game and clicking on Check Game Compatibility, the emulator will take us to the RPCS3 website in the Compatibility tab. On this page, in the Search tab, we'll search for the name of the game, in my case here, Tekken 5. When you find the game, click on its name and from there, on this page, we can check whether or not the emulator needs a custom configuration. As you can see here, in the case of Tekken, no option that deviates from the standard RPCS3 settings is recommended for this title. In other words, we can use the global settings I taught you. Now in another example, God of War 3, we can see that there are customized settings available. To create this custom setting, you don't want to click on the emulator's config tab, because that will change the setting for all games, and that's not what we want. Here's what you do. Right-click on the game you want to customize and click on Create Custom Configuration. And now you can change the settings indicated by the emulator's website. In the case of God of War 3, here in the first CPU tab, we're told to change the SPU X float accuracy to relaxed, and the SPU block size to mega. In the GPU tab, we need to leave the frame limit at 60 FPS, change the resolution scale threshold to 160%, and activate the right color buffers and asynchronous texture streaming boxes. On the Advanced tab, we need to change the RSX FIFO accuracy to Atomic, and change the driver wake-up delay to 50. Click Apply and then save custom configuration. Now remember that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial that the emulator offers some patches for certain games? Let's enable the recommended patches for God of War 3. Right-click on the game and go to Manage Game Patches. According to the RPCS3 compatibility website, you need to enable the Disable MLA and Disable Spumla patches for the game to run properly. In particular, I activate all the possible patches so that the game performs as well as possible, except for Unlock FPS, which can cause some bugs in the game that prevent you from progressing through the story. Otherwise, activate everything, unless you notice that your game has lost some graphic details that bother you, then you can follow the emulator's recommendation. Now just click apply and then save. And that's it, these are the custom settings recommended by the emulator's own compatibility list, and to run the game with these custom settings, just right click on the game and then on boot with custom configuration. Playing God of War 3 with these settings will greatly improve your experience. And now your games are ready to run smoothly, with beautiful graphics and excellent performance. That's all for today folks, I'll stop here then, thanks and see you next time.